God's Pastor Tony. Good Friday. The first words that Jesus spoke as a 12-year-old boy that we have recorded, he said, I must be about my father's business. It's Friday, April 3rd, AD 33. Darkest day in human history. But today, one death, one brutal, gruesome death is the worst and the best of all human deaths. It leaves on the canvas of human history the darkest brushstroke. In Jerusalem, God the Son, the creator of all that is, will be executed. Jesus has been captured and his disciples have scattered. Jesus is led violently into the house of Annas, a former high priest, who questions him about his teaching. And Jesus is silent. Frustrated, Annas sends Jesus to his son-in-law, Caiaphas, the current high priest. The trial has begun. They assemble hastily. The witnesses are there, but they haven't been screened very well. The testimonies don't line up. They're spending money on false witnesses, but they did it too fast, and the stories didn't line up. So the council members look all disconnected, and Jesus is silent, silent as a lamb. And Caiaphas, who's all irritated, impatient, I order you by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. This is it. Guys, the hour has come. When Jesus speaks these words, he seals the punishment of death, which is why he came and what he came to do. And Jesus says, you've said so, but I tell you from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Well, that's it. Caiaphas tears his robe in this kind of fake outrage. Jesus blasphemy. He declares the trial, it's over, it ends. What, what further testimony do we need? We have heard for ourselves from his own lips. And as the sun breaks over Jerusalem, kind of that eastern ridge, Judas is already swinging from his own belt. Peter is struggling with the grief of his failure. And Jesus already has his face streaked with dried blood. The council's verdict, he's guilty of blasphemy. Their sentence, death. But it's a sentence they can't carry out. They got no power. Rome's in control. Rome's in control of capital punishment. All together, through six different trials between 2 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Good Friday, the first three trials are all the religious leaders, and the last three trials are all the civil leaders held by the Romans. All three of the Jewish trials where Jesus was proclaimed a sinner, their sentence, all three, is death. They broke their own law to make sure that Jesus died. All three of the Roman civil trials where Jesus was proclaimed innocent, which is kind of shocking, so what are they going to do? Pilate says, I find no guilt in him. <laughs> but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at Passover. So do you want me to release the king of the Jews? And they cried out again. Not this man, but Barabbas. And Pilate is confused. But they cry, crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate said, take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. So it goes to Jesus. You will not speak to me? Do you know that I have the authority to release you? I have the authority to crucify you? <laughs> you know what Jesus says? This. You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. God is in control of this whole process. Pilate thinks he's in control. The religious leaders, they think they're in control. Even the mob thinks they're in control. But Jesus stumbles out of the praetorium, horribly beaten, bleeding. The Roman soldiers have been brutal in their creative cruelty. 
thorns have been ripped from Jesus' scalp, and his back is just one grotesque wound, and Golgotha is barely 400 yards through the garden gate. Jesus doesn't even have enough strength to carry the 40-pound crossbar. So Simon is drafted from the crowd, Simon of Cyrene, to help him carry it. And 25 minutes later, Jesus is hanging in sheer agony on the cruelest instrument of torture ever devised. Nails have been driven through his hands and his feet. A sign above Jesus declared in Greek and Latin and Aramaic, he is the king of the Jews. The king on both sides have thieves beside him. The mockers are saying, let him save himself if he's the chosen one. But they don't understand if that king saves himself. Their only hope for salvation is lost, but they don't get it. And Jesus asked his father to forgive them. By mid-afternoon, darkness has fallen upon everyone. But for Jesus, the darkness, the horror, he has never seen before. This, more than the nails and the thorns, is what made him sweat blood. The Father's wrath. Jesus is drinking the full cup of God's wrath. He is, at that moment, no longer the blessed, but the cursed. Jesus has become sin in terrifying isolation, cut off from the Father, from all humans, and Jesus screams, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? No greater love, humility, or obedience has ever been displayed or will ever be displayed than what Jesus just did. Jesus did not merely feel forsaken. He was forsaken. Not only by his disciples, but by God himself. The Father had delivered him up, Judas, to the Jews, to Pilate, and finally on the cross himself. And now, when Jesus had cried, God had closed his ears. The crowd had stopped jeering. The demons had not stopped taunting. The pain had not been abated. Instead, every circumstance bespoke the anger of God, and there was no countering voice. This time, no word came from heaven to remind him that he was God's son and greatly loved. No dove came down to assure him of the Spirit's presence and ministry. No angel came to strengthen him. No redeemed sinner bowed to thank him. Jesus was bearing the curse. Who was he? He cries out in Aramaic, but he doesn't use the greatest of all Aramaic words, Abba. Even in anguish of the Garden of Gethsemane, distraught and overborne, he had been able to use Abba, but not here. In love, he has drained the full cup of his Father's wrath. Jesus has borne our full curse there's no debt left to pay, and he has nothing left to give. It is finished. And the Son of God dies. It is the worst and the best of all human deaths. For on this tree, Jesus bears our sin in his body. The righteous for the unrighteous. That he might bring us to God. And now it's finished. The first words of Jesus I must be about my father's business. In Jesus' last words, it is finished. Remember that as we go into this weekend. And I love, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Thank you for listening this week.